on page two of our practice test, we just want to identify the property, the definition, or the posture that justifies each of these statements. So in number six, if x equals y and y equals z, then x equals z, that's our transitive property because we know when all three things are, are equal, that's our transitive property. On number seven, A, C, and E are coplanar. From one of our postulates, we know that three points determine a plane. On number eight, A, B, E, A, B equals C, D. Then A, B plus E, F equals C, D plus E, F. Notice we're adding the same thing to both sides. So that is our angle addition postulate. Our angle addition property. I don't care which way you do it. Adding the same thing to both sides. Okay. And on the next one, we're told angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Therefore, angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. The reason is we know all right angles are congruent. On number 10, we want to sketch a triangular prism. The key word here is prism, so we know it's got to be the same on both sides, and triangles are our bases. So that's what this one should look like. Notice we've got a triangle in front and a triangle here. So those two triangles are parallel, and then we just connect them. And number 11 is kind of a trick question because planes cannot be skew. Lines can be skew, but planes can't be skew. So AB and FE are skew lines, but planes are either parallel or they intersect. There's no in between. On number 12, we want to find the X, Y, and Z in this shape. I want to show some work. Notice I'm given parallel lines. Since I'm given parallel lines, I look at my X's, they're same side interior angles, aren't they? So then we're going to say, oh, A to X plus or minus 7 plus 3X minus 11 equals 180. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for X, so combine our like terms. 8 plus 3 is 11x, and then negative 7 minus 11 is negative 18, equals 180. Well, then what we're going to do is we'll solve for x. We'll add 18 to both sides. So 11x equals 1, 9... Oops, just notice I didn't match up my 18 there. Didn't make sense. Okay, equals 198. So I divide both sides by 11, and X would be 18. Now Y, they have alternate interior angles, don't they? So by knowing Y, they're going to be equal. So I'm going to say... My two y's are going to be 2y plus 23 equals 4y plus 8. Now let's solve for y. So let's minus 2y from both sides. At the same time, we'll subtract 8 from both sides. So 23 minus 8 is 15 equals 2y. I'll divide both sides by 2. y would be 7.5. Now, how do you find z from there? Well, there's a couple different ways I could find z. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll find the value of my angles with y. So, 2y right here. So 2y, so 2 times 7.5 plus 23. So I get 15 
plus 23. Well, that's 38 then, isn't it? So this angle is 38. Then I know these two angles make a straight line. So if I take 180 minus 38, let's find the measure of that angle. Whoops, I don't want that. So if I take 180 minus 38, I get 142. So this angle with Z is 142. So now I can make an equation. I'm going to say, oh, 3Z squared minus 5 is 142. Well, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So 3z squared is 147. I'll divide by 3. z squared, well, that'll be 49, won't it? Take the square root of both sides. Remember, you get two answers here, plus or minus 7 is what we get for question number 12.